Hey, welcome back to Ask the Professor with the Texas RV Professor Terry Cooper, right up there over my shoulder down in Somerville, Texas, uh, where it's way too hot. <laughs> well, maybe ah. not way too hot for Texans, I don't think. So um, uh, I just, uh, uh, we were talking about, about uh, tankless water heaters, water heaters that essentially, uh, uh, that are, I, I think this is a great idea, y you know, even for a home, you know, where, I mean, weight isn't a consideration at home, but it is it, the, the volume of water you're keeping hot all the time is uh, is is a factor anywhere and uh, again yes why should you be you know keeping all that water hot all the time just because uh, just just because you mm -hmm. need it on demand when you can do it another way so um, so we we're going to talk a little bit about you know how exactly is it that these these uh, uh, tankless water heaters work and how do they do it so how do they give you water on demand. I, that's the part that confuses me is you've got water going through a pipe on demand. It's got to be heating it like that, doesn't it? Oh, it is. And what it's got is a little flow switch in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you look at it from the technical standpoint, when that faucet comes on mm -hmm. and all of a sudden we start having water flow, yes, that water flowing through that pipe causes that little sensor, that little flow switch to trip. And when it does, that kicks everything off, lights the burner, or as they say, lights the fires, kicks the tires, and off we go. Mm-hmm. Okay. And, uh, and that's really what's happening. Okay. So these are, are these are these are propane in general, or are they are they electric? They will be propane. Mm -hmm. uh, we find that because of the power limitations, you know, here again, like we've talked about in the past, about the 120 volts that we have on these rigs, we have a limitation of how much of that we can we can handle because of the, the power cord. Mm -hmm. So what they did is they went with propane as the primary fuel source. Okay. And then, remember now where we've talked about, and uh, if folks will remember, where we've, we've discussed about the house voltage, mm -hmm. the 12 volts, the deep cycle battery. You've got to have good 12 volts because that's really what fires up that circuit board that's the brains to this whole thing. Mm -hmm. So you've got to have good voltage. And then again, you've got to have good water. You know, you've got to have some good solid water coming through there to keep up with the demand. Okay, so all of those things work in concert then. Um, what, uh, now, it, it, does this run a pilot, uh, a, a pilot light when it's not heating or is it uh, like a piezo starter or something like that? Well, actually, Dave, it's what we call an electronic ignition. Okay. And it's working on the same principle as a spark plug in an automobile. Okay. So when that flow starts, all of a sudden, that switch sends voltage to that circuit board and says, we need ignition. And all of a sudden, it starts sparking, and the gas valves open up and let propane through, and we have ignition. Okay. Then when this thing finishes, uh, then it, the burner turns off, and then the blower shuts down. Okay. And so, because that's another thing that we haven't talked about is that there is a blower on this thing that we're turbocharging that air, so that way we can get maximum burn of that propane fuel along with that air. Okay, we've and got which is one of the drawbacks we have with uh, with uh, water heaters. Well, here we've got a picture uh, of the uh, the innards of one of these guys here. Uh, what can you tell me? Is is the blower that up there, the upper right? Is that what we're seeing there? Well, actually, if you'll notice that little. Um, unit that's got this little honeycomb look to it that's the exhaust oh, so what okay. we're doing is we're exhausting that air out okay and what's happening is is that when you look at a standard water heater you just have a flame in there and you have a tendency to cause soot and all kinds of issues mm -hmm. but when you put a blower on that thing you're actually feeding air to that flame much like where you know, say you're around a campground and you you know how you're trying to start a fire and how you kind of blow on a little bit to get things going sure well that, that's what we're doing here is we're just really pouring the air to it so that way we get a good clean burn and we cause that air to come pass through that burn chamber area that happens to have a copper coil wrapped around it mm -hmm. and that copper coil is carrying the water and we heat the outside of the copper because the water's on the inside and it's just, there is you this go the there's a good picture of it right there that's the burn chamber oh and you know, the, your arrows are showing how that uh, how that rolls through Okay. Mm -hmm. That's uh, so water so comes in on the bottom, and and as it travels up, mm -hmm. it, it brings you know it picks up that heat. And so when it comes out on the top end, that baby is making some pretty good heat. And it's about 120 degrees is what it's putting out. Okay, and that's about is that about the, that's about the maximum you're going to want probably. Now is that that's <laughs> right? That's because if you go any higher than that, you're going to run the risk of scalding, mm -hmm. you know, of people getting burned. Gotcha. And so I mean, why do we want to really pump up too much heat? And that's another reason that they can save energy is because we're not having to heat that water so hot. Mm -hmm. 
we can actually back the temperature down a little bit. Okay. Now, is, is this prone to any of the same problems that you have with water heaters, like, like sediment or, uh, or uh, uh, you know, a lime buildup or things like that with water that isn't uh, maybe hard, with hard water, or is it uh, less prone to that? It's going to be a lot less prone. Because, mm -hmm. see, there's no holding tank for you to have to drain. No okay. anode rod. You know, because, like, say, Suburban, the other guys, uh, they got a steel tank, and they require an anode rod. Well, you know, these tankless water heaters right here that these guys have got, it's really pretty of a slick idea what they've done here. Mm -hmm. There's no need for that. Now, I'm sure you get into some areas that you're going to have a lot of heavy calcium and stuff. You might have some sediment buildup, but I can already see that the maintenance on this thing is going to be a whole lot less. It right. really is. Well, the thing is that most the, the water that's going into it is moving through it pretty quickly, so it probably it, it may be less prone just on that basis alone, wouldn't it be? Absolutely. Okay. It would be. It okay. would be. Now, one thing that we're going to have to remember as RVers, we're still going to want to use that uh, pressure regulator on our water hose if we're bringing in city water. Mm -hmm. And, of course, we're going to need to make sure if we're going to be using the onboard water heater or the onboard water tank that we have a good pump and we have water in there. And, of course, it's good, clean water. Yeah. So. Okay. What are, what are, uh, are there any uh, uh, drawbacks on this? Well, you know, believe it or not, and we need to talk about that because, as a matter of fact, I'd like to see if we could do one segment on that, is okay. that there's a little bit different operation on it. Okay. It's, uh, there's a little bit of change of, of, of how we do things. We, as Americans, have been programmed to do certain things a certain way, and all of a sudden a new product comes out, and we have to stop and say, wait a minute, yeah. this operates a little bit different. Yeah, okay. Well, well, we will get to that then in segment three. So stay with us here on Ask the Professor with Professor Terry Cooper, and uh, don't go away. The Texas RV Professor wants to hear from you. Email your questions or comments to professor at rvnn.tv. If you have a specific problem, it really helps if you can send a photo as well. That makes it easier for Terry to diagnose your issue. You can also leave a voicemail for Terry Cooper at 877-578-RVNN, extension 708. Follow RV Newsnet on Facebook and Twitter, and you can receive text messages to alert you when we're streaming live by texting RVNN to 72727. That way, you can join us live in the chat room, ask questions, and become part of the RV Newsnet family. Remember, any photos or other material submitted to us become the property of RV Newsnet and cannot be returned. Today's show is brought to you by Angie's List, where you'll find thousands of unbiased reports and reviews about service companies in your area. Whether you're looking for a roofer, plumber, house cleaner, dentist, or even a doctor, Angie's List members share their experiences with each other so that you can choose the service company that's right for your job. Companies can't pay to be on Angie's List, and the reviews come from people just like you who have had experience with the companies mentioned. To find out more, go to rvnn.tv and click on the Angie's List ad. <laughs> 